was uh, it was great to hear Bill Maher using the, uh, the uh, paraphrasing the clips that we were playing of Franklin Roosevelt calling out Republicans. In fact, why don't you pull those up there, uh, Sean or Shano? Excuse me. Uh, pulling up there, paraphrasing the big lie that well that Franklin Roosevelt was accusing the the Republicans of using back in 1944. This was the election of 44. In the election of 48, Harry Truman essentially saying, did the same thing. He called it the do nothing Congress. They they overrode his veto of Taft Hartley. He tried he introduced national health care, single payer health care legislation in 1947. The Republicans shot it down. A lot of efforts to to do good legislation. And uh, and so, uh, you know, it's just it's just great. We've been t- we've been pounding this thing on this program for a week and a half uh, to hear Bill Maher pick up uh, this clip from Franklin Roosevelt in 1944 as he is identifying the Republican strategy to try to win the election, which I would say is the same strategy they're trying right now. Here's Franklin Roosevelt. Just 30 seconds. Remember, a number of years ago, there was a book, Mein Kampf. A book, Mein Kampf. Written by... Hitler himself. Written by Hitler himself. The technique was all set out in Hitler's book, and it was copied by the aggressors of Italy and Japan. According to that technique, you should never use a small falsehood. Never use a small falsehood. Always a big one. Always a big one. (laughs) For its very fantastic nature would make it more credible. If only you keep repeating it over and over and over again. There you go. Only if you keep repeating it over and over and over again. On the line with us, the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Teamsters, uh, James Hoff at Teamster.org. President Hoff, welcome back to the program. Well, Tom, it's good to be back on the program. It seems to me like this big lie strategy that the Republicans have uh, employed, we've, we had, we've identified five or six or seven of them just in Paul Ryan's speech, and you know, Mitt Romney's going on with them. One of the big lies that these guys have been pushing since 1947 is somehow that if, if organized labor is destroyed, that America will become a paradise, and instead it's become a nightmare for the American middle class. Well, this is something that we're seeing now. We saw it in '47. But more than anything else, we're starting to see it in 2010, which is really the advent of the Tea Party uh, and their attack. And we first saw it, you know, vilifying teachers in New Jersey and Ohio and Wisconsin and public employees that they shouldn't have pensions, they shouldn't have decent wages. Uh, and it was all basically a, a program to basically make people change the opinion about unions, especially public employee unions. Then they went after teachers. And there's no end to this. This is part of the big lie theory. Uh, they're not the reason why there's deficits. It's because of bad financial management, uh, not getting enough revenue from corporations. And that's the real problem, and not vilifying unions. So this is basically something, you know, I, I don't go back to 47, but I do realize that from 2010, this is a whole new attack that has been running wild. Uh, and we saw it at the Republican convention. Uh, we saw Chris Christie pounding his chest about how he took on the teachers. Uh, and we see this, we saw it in the same thing uh, in Ohio, the same thing you know, in Wisconsin. So it, it's kind of the big lie theory, and you know, basically there, there was no big deficit in Wisconsin. But he used that as a pretense to go after teachers and go after public employees. Well, he created so one by giving a... a right. he, ga- he gave a multi-hundred million dollar tax cut to the millionaires and billionaires in his state and thus created a deficit <laughs> that he, that he that well, had to fill. That's another thing. They always leave that out. I'm from Michigan. <laughs> they did the same thing in Michigan. They say, yeah. you've got problems. The first thing they do is to give a tax cut to the corporations. And the same thing in Ohio. And it's the same thing in Wisconsin. This is like a playbook they have. Yeah. And then they say, my God, look at the deficit. The teachers must have done that. President Hoff, one of the uh, questions that the Republicans have been hammering, and then, you know, they keep going, they're trying to e- evoke Jimmy Carter, but the question that they keep asking is, are you better off than you were four years ago? I have a detailed list of, of answers to that question, and, and I think you and I both know what, you know, four years ago, we were hemorrhaging jobs and, and uh, talking about a new Great Depression, and Hank Paulson was trembling and begging for money for TARP because everything was about to collapse. But isn't the real question 
that we should be talking about and the Democrats need to be talking about, frankly. Are you better off than you were 30 years ago or 32 years ago when Reaganomics and, the, and Reagan's hostility to, to working people, which was kicked off with his busting Patco in 81, are you better off than you were 30 years ago when this 30-year experiment of Reaganomics was started? Well, I remember that in with Reagan. You, know, you remember the Laffer curve and all that? Oh, yeah. Uh, when they basically said, if we get tax cuts for the rich people, it's going to trickle down to the poor people. Right. Now, I don't know of any poor people that want to wait for the trickle down, but that's where they started all this. But <clears throat> coming up even closer, if you go back even to the era of the, the, the Bush recession in 08, mm-hmm. the, the Lehman moment and all the things, TARP, people seem to have had forgotten that there's a collective amnesia that we started with this co- economy in a complete tank in 08. And, you know, from that, we're doing much better today. We're, we still have a lot of people unemployed. But look at the auto industry. Michigan and Ohio have less unemployment than the national average. People are back to work. Ask the hundreds of thousands of auto workers that are back to work if things are better for them. Ask the Teamster car hauler that has a job today in hauling more cars in a record year if his jobs are better off. So things are better, but they're marginally better. We really can't be satisfied. We've got to do a lot better than what we're doing right now. But you, to answer that question is things are better, but they've got to get a lot better. Yeah, and, and wasn't it ironic to see at the RNC John Kasich in Ohio, uh, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, Rick Snyder, I don't recall if he had a speaking role in Michigan, but you know, it would have been the same speech, um, all talking about how their economies are better and taking credit for it as if Republicans had something to do with it when it was really uh, President Obama defined Mitt Romney's let, uh, let, uh, let Detroit go bankrupt uh, theory and instead rescuing the U.S. auto industry. I know. It's really incredible. I mean, Rick Snyder, how he could take credit, he, was, he, he would have been against you know, bailing out the auto industry because they're all Republicans. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, much to his credit, uh, President Obama had the courage to do it against a lot of advice. It was a right move, and he did save thousands and thousands of jobs, and really saved a major manufacturing center uh, in the United States. Of you know, it, you know, Ford didn't go in, but Chrysler and General Motors were in bankruptcy. Mm. And basically, if we, you know, if he wouldn't have done this, I think Ford would have been in trouble. Think of all the suppliers. Think of the hundreds of thousands of people that are connected to the auto industry that are working today that would not have been if that had been let to go. So that's a major thing. And no matter what Mitt Romney said, he can't get away from that editorial he wrote in the New York Times, let Detroit go bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? He's never going to. How he comes back to Michigan, and he still says it. And I said, boy, this guy is just tone deaf. Yeah. Well, now he's trying to say that uh, Romney, or excuse me, that Obama actually followed his advice. And uh, <laughs> it's like, what? What? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it genuinely is. Uh, we're talking with the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teams, Teamsters, James Hoffa. We have just about a half a minute left, Mr. Hoffa. Your suggestion to the Democrats for what they should be doing this week? Well, I think, number one, they've got to do what the Republicans didn't do. The Republicans had probably the most dishonest convention I've ever seen. Uh, there were platitudes, talks about their fathers, about uh, their family life, about the forefathers. But there was nothing about what they intend to do with the economy, which is what everybody wants to know. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, they didn't talk about they want tax cuts for the rich. They want to get rid of the capital gains tax. Uh, they basically want to cut entitlements. They want to go after Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. You didn't hear a thing about that. Right. Uh, you never heard the word voucher. Yeah. But what, uh, so they basically glossed that over. I think that Obama and his team have to come out and really put out a good picture of what they're doing. And he's been doing that. He's very straightforward about where yep. he wants to go with this. I'm, I'm absolutely with you and totally agree. James Hoffman, thanks so much for being with us today.